do. And I'm asking them from the position of being a member of this academic community, one, uh, and then being a member of the larger community of the Greater Baltimore, um, number two. And I, I figured that most of you are in the same position, uh, and therefore we could ask all these questions uh, together. Now, and the questions are, of course, what happened and what are you going to do about it? Um, the first one seems, I think, kind of silly, uh, because we all know what happened, right? Oh, thank you, dear. Um, but I, I, I do agree uh, with uh, the previous speaker that uh, the news has really done a lot of commentary, but hasn't been able to explain to us exactly what is going on. And so I want to just clarify really quickly what is going on, because we have to understand what exactly is going on if we want to figure out what to do about it. Um, so first off, we have a couple of uh, protests that have occurred uh, in the days after Freddie Gray passed away on April 19th. Uh, those protests are organized, they have clearly identifiable leadership, and they have clearly identifiable demands. And by the way, if you all are interested in getting involved in those, there's a, a protest at 3 o'clock uh, down at the state's attorney's office at 120 East Baltimore Street, uh, they're then heading over to a rally at City Hall at 4 o'clock. Uh, uh, and so if, you're, if you want to join the protest, uh, please do. Um, the second thing that we've all been reacting to in the last couple of days are, of course, uh, the riots. Uh, they began on Saturday evening after one of the protests occurred. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they kicked off on Monday and got quite violent that evening. Uh, and the cameras uh, from the national news media moved in. Um, and I point this out because you know, we've been talking about the two as though they're the same thing. Uh, you know, many people on the news media, and I think Kimberly Moffat is going to talk about this, and so I'm not going to go into it too far, have said, well, the protests have turned violent. And quite frankly, that's not really the case. There were protests, uh, and then there were riots. And usually the people that, that were involved in each uh, didn't uh, overlap. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why I'm encouraging you all to head out to the protests. I would not encourage you all to head out to the riots. Uh, and of course, but... One way in which the two do very much overlap is they're both a reaction to a couple of things that have been touched on already by the people that have spoken before me. The first is, of course, uh, their reaction to the arrest uh, uh, and then uh, the subsequent death of Freddie Gray on April 19th. Um, but in a broader sense, uh, their reaction to the rise of the carceral state and the abandonment of the poor in Old West Baltimore. And so I just want to talk about those things because, again, if we're seeking ways to do something about this, we have to understand the texture uh, and the development of uh, these things that people are protesting. So if you look at uh, the state of Maryland, Baltimore is the poorest jurisdiction in the entire state. Uh, it has the, large, the highest poverty rate at 25.2%. Um, and for a central jurisdiction in the state, that's really important because if you look at the other places that even come close, they're very hard to get to, they're very rural, they have very little industry. Uh, what they did have, which was oyster shucking and processing uh, stuff coming out of the bay, is long gone. Uh, and they're way down uh, 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 in the uh, southeast of the state. Uh, so Baltimore uh, is in a really bad position for so central a jurisdiction. Um, its unemployment rate uh, is 8.4% today. Uh, that, of course, as Tyson pointed out, Mass the fact that there are a lot of people who aren't being recorded because they've just given up. Uh, and so the, the area is in pretty bad shape. Um, the poverty in the city is concentrated in the purple areas uh, over time, oh, sure. and it's expanding into the, um, the, the yellow and the orange areas uh, more recently. But if you look closely at those areas, they're basically Old West Baltimore, uh, which is where the riots have, have been occurring uh, or occurred on Monday, Old East Baltimore over by Hopkins, and then South Baltimore. Um, and in those areas, you've had a pretty concentrated poverty for, for a pretty sustained period uh, of time. This is, of course, a product of the industrialization of the city. Uh, big firms like Bethlehem Steel, GM, moved out of the city years ago. Uh, and the city has attempted over the course of the last uh, 30 or 40 years to replace those jobs with service sector and tourism jobs, with Harbor Place, uh, with uh, uh, getting Under Armour to open up there, but it simply hasn't been able, uh, through those new businesses, to get the, both the volume of jobs uh, and the pay of those jobs from those firms that have left uh, to, to fill the, the gap. Uh, and so as a result, you have a pretty significant number of people who either don't have jobs or don't have good jobs in the city. Uh, and they are concentrated, by and large, uh, in these areas. 
Now, many young people in these areas, uh, we're not just going to sit there passively uh, and uh, deal with joblessness, deal with significant poverty. Uh, and a large number of them, many of them my peers when I was in high school in Baltimore, turned to the drug trade, uh, particularly when crack exploded across the city in the mid-1980s. Uh, and their exploits have, are, are well known to all of us, whether it's in uh, Homicide, the TV show, The Corner, the wonderful uh, book, or um, uh, The Wire, the HBO series. And I point all those out primarily to say, because of course they're all, they're all they're not serious academic studies, but uh, they do uh, alert us to a problem that has been uh, in place in Baltimore for a solid 20 years uh, in the form that we know it. Um, now, at the same time that Baltimore is hemorrhaging jobs, the drug trade is fastening itself in many of these communities, um, and uh, much of the, the infrastructure of these communities, because of years of neglect and redlining, is crumbling, um, the federal government begins a war on drugs to try and deal with the urban crisis. Not a domestic Marshall Plan, not an effort to bring jobs back to the United States, but a war on drugs. Um, and the war on drugs in Baltimore leads to some pretty remarkable numbers. First off, it leads to a huge lockup of young African-American men. Um, specifically, uh, if you look at um, uh, inner city Baltimore, the areas that I just mentioned, um, you have a black population in the state that's roughly 30%. Uh, you see that 68% uh, of the folks in Maryland prisons are uh, from uh, the African-American community. Uh, and many of them are from Baltimore MPG, of course. Um, this process was actually accelerated under Martin O'Malley uh, in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. uh, where he basically said, look, he turned to ComStat, he turned to a system where he basically going to say, look, every single uh, person who uh, is in the police department, we're going to uh, find out how many arrests you're making, we're going to check uh, for each precinct, how many arrests you're making, uh, and we're going to put pressure on you to arrest as many people as possible. Uh, the police department is able to get those numbers up by focusing on quality of life crimes, what are called broken window uh, policing. Uh, and in 2005, the number of arrests in the city shot up tremendously in response to O'Malley policy. Uh, specifically, they went up to 100,000 arrests for the entire city for that year. It's only a city of 640,000 people. So one, roughly one in six people are arrested that year. Um, <clears throat> interestingly enough, about 20,000 were released without actually being charged by prosecutors. Um, and the neighborhood that had the highest arrest rate in the entire state was Freddie Gray's neighborhood. Uh, which is why, as Tyson showed you on his slide, the people in that neighborhood thought the police were the least professional uh, uh, in the entire uh, state. Uh, they're not just making this stuff up, as Barack Obama has pointed out. Uh, <laughs> now, aside from uh, just high arrest numbers, uh, the pressure put on the police to deal with a crisis that should have been spread out to many different organizations within the city and state government led them to, in many cases, or in certain cases, or among certain officers, to become quite brutal. Um, and what you saw in the last four or five years, this, the, 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 uh, the, the Baltimore Sun has done a wonderful report on this, which I'm quoting from here, is that a certain number of cops really got pretty uh, nasty with the people that they were supposed to protect and sir, um, what that led to is between about uh, 2000 and, let me find the specific number here, pardon me. Uh, 2011 and 2014, the city paid out just shy of six million bucks uh, to big sums of police brutality. These are some of the people uh, that uh, they were paid uh, by the city for uh, not just wrongful arrest, but being brutalized while they were being uh, arrested. And this included everyone from a 15 year old kid to an 87 year old grandmother. Uh, I would call the police and say, oh my God, something horrible has happened. The police would come by, rough them up, arrest them, uh, and then they would be able to sue on the back end uh, to get a uh, restitution for their experience. Um, I want to point out that last line that the Sun uh, uh, has written in its column that said, the one hidden cost here is that there's a six million that the city pays out, but the other big cost of this type of activity is that the perception that officers are violent can poison the relationship between residents and police, and I think there's absolutely no question that particularly in this neighborhood, that is what happened. Um, now, this process was occurring around the country in the 80s, in the 90s. It kept on going through the early 2000s. And I can recall in 1999, 
when I was arrested in the anti-police brutality uh, uh, protests in New York City uh, over the shooting of Amadou Diallo. Um, some of the same players were there. Jesse Jackson, who was just in Baltimore at Freddie Gray's funeral, was there. Al Sharpton, who was just at Freddie Gray's funeral, was there. In fact, he was leading uh, the protest. Um, and what, of course, the question that you have to ask is, well then why, and I'm sure everyone saw this on, on John Stewart the other night, why are people like Wolf Bl Blitzer so surprised uh, when things of this nature uh, occur? Why were we surprised by Ferguson? Um, and the reason, of course, is that this has been going on pretty much steadily since the 80s. The difference uh, in the last, say, decade prior to 2014 was that we just decided to look away. Uh, and in the process, uh, the, 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 uh, the whole thing got quite much worse than it could have been. Um, that begs the question, what do we do about it? Um, I want to quote from Martin Luther King just to um, uh, make the case for what we should do here. Uh, and this is in 1967, he's speaking in the middle of the long, hot summers, um, and he's about to get ready to do his Poor People's Campaign in Washington, D.C. Uh, he says, I think America must see the riots that, that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society, which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. And so in a real sense, our nation's summers of riots are caused by our nation's winters of delay. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. Social justice and progress are the absolute guarantors of riot prevention. Uh, and so I just want to point out, in closing, uh, the protests and rioters have been clear. Uh, they've said exactly what they believe is wrong with the larger society, the operation of the criminal justice system, the abandonment of the poor uh, in downtown Baltimore. And we all here, uh, I think as residents of uh, this great city, have a choice, and a choice that's really already laid out for us. We know what is wrong, and we should therefore get involved in some way to do something about it for the greater good. I think there's three ways that you can do that. One which is quite simple uh, and straightforward for anyone in that kind of community is to study it. Um, we're using all of these charts, which have been produced by academics, uh, either in the state and city bureaucracy or on a university campus. Uh, they are very helpful for decision makers who are trying to address these problems. If you're interested in getting involved in that way, do so. There are a large number of people on this university campus who are doing so, and you can link up with them. Uh, a second way to do something is to create an organization that will allow you to get involved. I know the BSU has created a social justice chair, I believe, um, and I know that the ASA has been working on these efforts. I know that UMBC for Ferguson with a group of students who have gathered around these issues in the last couple months. And I encourage you all to keep meeting and figuring out what you can do on this campus and off to address these issues. The last thing I'll say is that you can, of course, join an existing organization that is already doing something about this. Um, the, news, the news media has not been great about featuring all of the local activists who are behind uh, the protests, but there are a large number of them. Whether it's the Baltimore Algebra Project, Baltimore Block, which was doing protests about police brutality uh, and the lack of young people's access to uh, the decision-making process in the schools back in January, you can walk out at that time. Um, you can intern for a local elected official. I think everyone wants to intern for Elijah Cummings. <laughs> 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 